Hey everyone, it's Gavin Syme and welcome to Photo Bits. I have a pretty good bit for you today. Capture One is in a little bit of hot water. Now I use Capture One all the time. I, I develop, in fact, I was in Capture One just before starting this video, working on some tweaks and updates to the uh, Silver, Silver 5 Styles Pack. So I'm using Capture One and Lightroom, and I have been for years. I've been using Lightroom since the very first version. One of the main reasons people use Capture One is for the fact that they don't have to pay a subscription. I remember when the subscription came out on Adobe, and this was in the days of the Pro Photo Show. You know, I was staunchly against the subscription model. I said this will be used uh, to just keep us perpetually paying even if they don't give us features. And it was. Though in recent years, Adobe has started, I think, stepping up the game a little bit and producing new features, especially with things like the AI tools and Lightroom and things like that. Now Capture One is essentially not doing away yet with the subscription model, but I think they will in the next couple of years. Regardless, they're punishing those who don't subscribe to the point where it's gonna become almost ridiculous. Now I made a post because Capture One 23 came out and the 23 version of Lightroom. And I did a lightweight comparison of those recently here on, on the channel. Like and subscribe and go check out that link. This update of Capture One was completely boring, okay? They, they didn't get up to speed with the AI tools. And I went over, I actually went to the Reddit thread and talked about this, which not surprisingly was not very popular. It mostly was met with fanboys saying that Capture One is so much better, the processing is better. I actually don't dislike Capture One. What I dislike is how Capture One as a company responds to their customers, fixes problems, and respects their customers. The main reason people took Capture One seriously uh, for, for most mainstream professional editing. I recognize that Capture One existed before, it was used with medium format cameras, and, and then it kind of picked up in the Fuji area, and people said, oh, it's better for Fuji, and it may well have been. The early versions uh, of this years ago, Capture One did seem to have better processing in some areas than Lightroom. Now that's not really the case, and I've also done comparisons here because I do my annual Lightroom versus Capture One comparison, which will be coming up in a month or two. But here's what Capture One did, is they've gone now and basically said, hey, if you don't subscribe, we're gonna punish you. We're gonna punish you. If you buy a perpetual license, you'll buy that license and you get what you get and it won't receive any feature updates. It might receive bug fixes, but it will not receive any feature updates even though you bought it. So while most products, and you pay a year, and whatever feature updates come out or don't come out are yours that year. And then your license is expired, but it still works, right? That's the idea of a perpetual license. You can keep using it. You don't have to upgrade. Capture One 2023, for example, is barely any better. They didn't do any of the AI tools. They didn't bring themselves up to speed with Lightroom in any way. Uh, the stuff they did introduce felt like it was kind of thrown together and hacky. For most people, if you had Capture One 2020, 2021, 2022, you wouldn't really need 23. Now me as a developer, I'm trying to use the latest features to build into my Capture One styles, my presets, and do like as much as I possibly can for the users of my products over at signfx.com. They made this post, they sent out an email and said basically, hey, if, if you don't subscribe, we're gonna screw you over. And then people of course flipped out. And so they, went, they made this frequently asked questions, which is basically them taking people's statements from the comments and like making excuses and trying to, to marketing speak around it. The problem that Capture One has, do you guys remember when Lightroom came out, it was $99. Even by current inflation standards in 2022, almost 2023, that's about 150 bucks. But if you look at Lightroom right now, you can get Lightroom and Photoshop for 10 bucks a month, all right, and Photoshop. So it's important to understand this distinction. I've done videos on pixel editors versus raw editors. They're not the same. Capture One doesn't replace Photoshop. Now you could use Capture One and Affinity Photo, for example, and then you'd have the raw editor and the pixel editing side, the layer-based editing side. People might say, well, well, Capture One has layers. Lightroom has masks, which are the same as Capture One's layers, more or less. But no, you get completely different results. This is why I still make Photoshop actions. This is why I still do Photoshop videos. A pixel editor like Photoshop, like Affinity, like others, is not the same. 
And if you're doing serious photography, in general, you need both. Even if you don't use the pixel editor a lot. With Adobe, you can get Photoshop and Lightroom for 10 bucks a month. Capture One costs $24 a month if you pay monthly, or if you wanna pay for the whole year, it's 179 per year. Okay, $15. So Capture One alone without a pixel layer-based editor is 50% more than, than Lightroom with Photoshop. Lightroom has a mobile app. The Lightroom mobile app is pretty dang good because you have all the same features. I've done a video on this. You can edit everything on the Lightroom mobile, your presets, your AI masks, everything, and sync it up and sync it right back into Lightroom Classic. And it's honestly pretty amazing. And then Capture One has kind of an app that I believe only works on iOS. To get the perpetual license, it's $300 a year, right? So how much? So that's $25 a month. That's like 250% more than Lightroom and Photoshop combined. Now they're saying basically to try and kind of smooth things over, they're saying, oh, but perpetual license users, if they've been subscribed, there's gonna be like a, a, a bonus for them if they've, depending on how long they've used Capture One, that they're gonna get a discount on the on the perpetual license. They're At this point, they're just BSing, realizing that they've really pissed off their customer base. What, what, what were you thinking, you guys? A lot of people like Capture One. It has, some, in some ways, it has more tools. It has more options, I should say. It doesn't actually produce re better results. As somebody who's having to tinker with the nuances of these extensively, making presets like Filmist and things like that, Lightroom in general is easier to get a good result and to refine your image. Capture One does have more nuances that you can edit. But for most image makers, that actually means it's more ways that you can kind of overdo it. Uh, but they're both good editing apps. They both produce great results. It's just that Capture One, even on Fuji files, as we've demonstrated here on the channel, isn't really better. The new 2023 version was basically meh so far, unless they do some major updates. Now they're taking it they're upping it a notch. They're saying, not only did we not do a very good update, right? An update that only the fanboys could love. They're coming back and doubling down and saying, oh, by the way, if you don't do the subscription, we're gonna punish you. We're gonna punish you. We're gonna punish you. And people already bought Capture One 2023 and the way they've set it up, it looks like they're not even gonna get a full year of updates. If you purchased before February 1st, 2023, you get free future updates until September, right? And when did they announce this? Just a few days ago. So they let everybody go through. This is this is lovely, right? Capture One let everybody go through on Black Friday and buy, you know, stuff like they were doing, buy Capture One 2023 perpetual license. Then came out with this that they knew was screwing over their customers. And now you're only getting updates through September, which is not a lot less than a year, but it's not it's not what you paid for. Capture One had a huge opportunity as people started saying, hey, I'm tired of Lightroom subscription. I wanna look at my other options. And a couple of years ago, I was seeing a lot of people move to Capture One to try it. Now I'm seeing an exodus back to Lightroom because Capture One isn't really improving that substantially. It's not putting out great new features and Capture One is completely out of touch. Capture One took me off their lists a long time ago because I started calling them out on this stuff and started saying, look, you're not listening to your customers. You're not fixing basic problems that should have been fixed years ago that people have been talking about. Capture One is out of touch with photographers which is a shame because we need good competition. I hope we see more competition besides Capture One rise to the top. And I think we will because it's clear that unless Capture One changes their course and the direction of their business, we're just gonna see them continually to decline in the photo industry. I don't want us all on Adobe. I don't want Adobe controlling the market either. The Capture One users are pissed, uh, particularly those perpetual license users. This doesn't affect the subscription people much. Although at that point, well, you can have Lightroom and Photoshop combined giving you way more power than anything Capture One can use combined for like 50% less. What do you think? Let me know in the comments.